we're, we're ready to go with the last one in this room today. In this room, we've talked a lot about personal data and uh, the programmable society. And we're going to close it off with the universal APIs, which I assume means it's the, the last API we'll need. This is the one API uh, to rule them all. <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe I'm wrong. Al Alexander will, will fill us in here, but uh, talking about the web after the age of platforms. So welcome, Alexander. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So I'm, I'm aware I'm, I'm last <laughs> tough position to be in. So I'm here to talk to you about the, like what we call the universal API. Tim Berners-Lee liked to call that solid. I, I assume some of, some of you have heard of it. Um, so I'll try to bring that concept to you. Uh, I'll start with um, a, a metaphor so that you get a sense of what it means to standardize and what it can what it can, how painful it can be to lack uh, a standard. Uh, here we go. So I guess we all faced that situation where we ran low on battery at a point where we actually needed our smartphone. And in, in such a situation, like you kind of look for your charger. If you don't have it, then you are faced the standardization problem. And in that particular case today, you and you understand what it means to lack standardization, meaning that if someone around you doesn't have the exact same charger as your phone needs, then you're kind of screwed. You you cannot plug it in and you cannot charge. So not a big deal in 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 the case of your smartphone. Like you can conclude that it's a, a nice opportunity to indulge in the like the secret passions you tend to refrain on a daily basis. But when it comes to interconnecting our, our business app, it can be um, another problem, meaning that it costs us a, a lot of money and time, and we lack opportunities not to be able to uh, mine our data correctly from all the applications that should be able to access the data, and interconnecting uh, different applications to different sources of, of data can actually turn out to be very costly. And I will, um, so I will uh, dig a little more on that. Uh, we, we know by now that data is, is gold on the web, and this is where the, the value is. So that's basically what we usually do when we build a web serv service. We gather up some data and try to make sense of it all to provide a useful service to our customer. That's more or less what a web company is about, at least most of them. And what we are doing today is basically this, meaning that we actually store our data in, in what can be considered a, a safe. Some, some use the word silo. Yeah, we, so one app is compatible with one server, and we stuff everything in that server. And that server is only accessible to that particular application. And if we want to make, to make it accessible to a second application, we, we either need to rework totally that second application to make it compatible with a server, or we need to rewrite the whole API, which ends up being very costly and which doesn't scale, meaning that if we need to connect a third application, then we're, we are facing the same problem all over again. And this is uh, never ending. And, and, and what we ended up doing is that we can't actually exploit all the value that is um, that resides into that data that we divide into silos and, and, and store separately. Um, to, to give you a concrete example of it, it I, I'll try to make it as uncommercial as possible, but just to give you a, a concrete example of um, a use case of a client so that you get the idea of what it means to uh, free data from a silo and be able to access it from different uh, size and application. And one of our clients is a service company, and they uh, they have say a directory of profile where that they can uh, search through when they receive a client need. So here you have a client that comes to the company with a need, saying like, "I need this PHP or SAP application, whatever." And so what the company does is that it looks internally at what are its uh, available resources and try to respond to the guy need and 
often enough, they lack resources, but they need to fetch in the other world. And it, it, it happens that they partner up with a lot of other companies over time. They work with different companies, so they know reliable people they want to work with or contractors. But as those people are not uh, in their data safe, yeah, in reference in their tool, then it's just not one click away. And so they, they make phone calls, they send emails to find the right person to address the client need. And, and this ends up being very costly, very inefficient, and sometimes they even end up not attending the, cl the, client, the client's needs. What uh, we are doing for them and a bunch of uh, service companies is that we are um, uh, aligning their APIs to the solid standards, let's say, which, which make them compatible between themselves. And that is that any single application can access any server of the network that creates and that data in, in one safe, let's say, or one save server, becomes available to the rest of the applications. The applications can be different as long as, um, what can I say, as long as the, they are able to understand the profile data and the project's data, which, which is of interest to them. They are able to mine the other servers of the network and, and uh, make sense of it all. Um, that, uh, like the, the way we solve this problem today is basically by creating uh, monopolies on the market, meaning that as we share, we split our data between silos and the silos are not compatible with each other, when we need to access the whole market, for example, for social reasons or to rent an apartment or whatever, what we do is that we all go to a common platform, to common safe, and we try to store all the data in that safe. And so we create a monopoly because all the value is there. We take all the data from the market and we stuff it into only one safe. And so that guy ends up having all the value. And we that ends up creating a monopoly, a, a software that has much more value than the rest of it. And as it's only accessible by one application, which is the one that is kind of the interface for that safe, then we end up creating a monopoly, which is uh, not necessary anymore in, in a world where the API can be standardized, because uh, I will uh, dig into that later, but we can, ac being able to access the data from different points um, uh, implies that each application that have much more network effect. I can access data not only from my company, but from all the company I want to partner with, and my, that makes my application much more powerful. Um, all this is not m me inventing it. The W3C and Tim Berners-Lee has been working on it over the past uh, 30 years. It's, it's there since the beginning of the web. It's, it's actually the what they consider the, the next evolution of the web standards. So they've been uh, working on it, tr uh, trying to standardize all the interactions between the client and the server, meaning the authentication, the permissions, and the way we structure the data so that any single application can connect to any single server. Like the web used to be standardizing web pages so that they can be accessible to any web browser. And the next version would be standardizing the data so that it becomes accessible to any single application. That's the vision, and, and for like it, they have been working on it for 30 years, and since 2017, we start to see uh, applications in productions of things that are actually uh, convincing and, and providing value to the, to the companies using it. Uh, so the companies using it, you have... Uh, uh, um, uh, big scale um, deployments that are being run at the moment. The, the World Bank is on it. The NHS is running experiments at, uh, with several, mil several million users. We personally are working with the European Trade Union Organization of the European uh, Cooperatives Organization. All those organi organizations span millions of users. And what they're trying to do is to avoid the one-size-fits-all application, they try to, prov they try to let them me their members build their old applications and still uh, be able to interact with each other and act as a common network, yeah, as, a, as a common web. 
Uh, so what does it mean to standardize your API or to have one API that is uh, compatible with all the applications that respect the, the standards? But the first uh, benefit is that more applications can actually access your data. It seem, seems trivial to say it, but it's, it's, a, it's a real benefit, meaning that it doesn't cost you anything to plug another API, another application on the server, because if the app was fought that way, was fought respect, respecting the, the universal API standards or the, web, or the solid standards, which might one day would be called the, the, the web standards, just the next version of it, then any app can actually access your data and you start to make, um, you, you can extract more value out of it because you get more use cases, you get more uses, etc. cetera. Um, and, and another benefit is that you get uh, different views or faces or applications to access the same data. So you end up with having a one-size-fits-all application. Different population, different use cases can have their own interfaces, their own interactions, and still make sense of the same data. Uh, as I said, you benefit from more network effect, meaning that you are able not only to uh, access the data that you manage to collect it from your server, but you can actually gather up public data that's um, made accessible to you via those standards, and you avoid having to gather up all the data into a common server anymore, so you get rid of the problem, and your uh, business app that you use on a daily basis end up uh, being able to bring more value because gathering more data allows you to have more use cases and more power at the end of your uh, business application you use every day. Uh, it's GDPR compliant by design, meaning that you do not have to suck all the data in on your server and to be responsible for that data. You can actually let the data where it is. You just have to have access to it. So sometimes it's public data and you don't have to do anything with it. You just let it where it is and access it and provide the service that you need to provide to the end user. And you can also have uh, permissions agreement with other organizations so that they let you access to their data and still uh, remain ownership over that data. And, and again, you, you don't have to move and transfer it to your server. It can remain where it is as the access to that data is standardized and accessing your server or another server ends up not making any difference. Uh, and finally, like the, the final benefit that it brings you is that it lowers the cost of the develop, develop development. That's actually what we've been working for at uh, Starting Blocks, meaning that in a way where the, the layer between an application and its server is standardized, you can actually root out one feature from an app and plug it in another application, and it will work directly, meaning that you do not have to tweak anything else. As the connection with the server is standardized, then entire features from one application can be reused from one app to another. The same way that, for example, the WordPress ecosystem works, like you have 16,000 16, plugins in WordPress, where as the access to the data is standardized and the ecosystem is standardized, then those are kind of modular features that one can plug in and plug out of its website right away. You can do the same here, but at the scale of the web. Yeah, any feature can be plugged out from an application and plugged back in onto another one. So you get more code reusability, and that actually lowers the cost of development. And this is what we, again, what we focused on, meaning that we developed many open source features that allow us to uh, build applications by composing those features together. That's, that's actually how we came up with this starting blocks name, meaning that every block is a full-fledged feature that we can assemble together to build an application. Uh, so to sum it up, you, you get um, like uh, many benefits uh, standardizing the API, and standardizing it is, is not a big deal. It's just uh, respecting a common set of rules like we do when we code an HTML page. Yeah, we, we don't code it in XML. We, we accept the idea that a title will be expressed that way or that a, a paragraph will be expressed that way. And, 
uh, standardizing the API to make it universal, to make it solid compatible, is, is, is just a matter of respecting the standards when coding our API. It, it's not other than this. So this has implications in the authentication system, on the permission system, and on the, on the way we express data itself with ontology and context. I, I won't dig too much into that, but uh, that's the idea. It brings you more network effect. It, it, it allows you to reuse pieces of code from one application to another. And hopefully, this will, def this will become the by default standards on the web so that we stop coding applications with their own language built in and we'll stop talk all talking the same language so that data can flow uh, freely from one application to another without the hassle that this brings today on a daily basis. And that's it for me. Thank you for listening. Any questions? All right. Look at this. Halfway through, halfway through day two, and he meets me halfway. <laughs> uh, first of all, thank you for uh, the speak. Was uh, quite inspiring, and my question comes um, from. We started in this room this morning talking about super apps. Uh, we chat having the monopoly in China, at least, trying to have the monopoly. So how do you see uh, Solid in uh, this ecosystem where it seems companies are moving forward and forward to build a nap to conquer them all? Well, it depends what you call a nap to cover them all, then, because the way I see it is that if you standardize the way to access your data, then it's the opposite that will happen, meaning that you can have actually as many apps as you want, maybe even one per user, and, and, and with that specific application, access all the data that you want because the connection between the app and the server are, is standardized, so it, it doesn't cost you anything to interconnect with as many servers as you want. So I, I, I would tend to see it the other way around, thinking that there won't be a one app fits all, but rather the opposite. There will be many different applications for many different use cases, still being able to access as many data as you can find on Amazon today or on Facebook, because interconnecting with your app with this pool of data that's here available and that varies the web will become possible. I, I don't know if I'm answering the question. Yeah, I do. Okay. Um, so my question is about uh, discovery. Can you explain a little bit uh, in layman's terms, maybe like how discovery would work? Totally. Uh, manually. <laughs> today, manually. And so that's actually part of the value we bring today to our users, meaning that in such a world, uh, finding data sources you can actually plug your application onto has value. And so it's... Uh, it's uh, part of the value we bring to our users. We try to equip ecosystems. For example, we work with uh, the freelancers ecosystem or with the trade unions ecosystem. And uh, by equipping, equipping different organizations of their own tool, we're able to tell them where to find relevant data that they might benefit from. So today it's done manually. And I, I think indexing will be key in such a new ecosystem. And there are probably money to be made in that area, but I, we are very early stage in this, and everything is to build. I think. I have a question. Uh, do you have a charger that fits my phone? <laughs> I don't. Uh, <laughs> no, using using that metaphor, though, uh, there are some. So I have an iPhone, so my charger can also the whatever the name of that is, lightning, lightning charger, can also supply audio uh, yeah. to my phone. And not every charger does that, right? Yeah. Not every interface does that. Yeah, yeah. So when it comes to universal APIs, is there kind of a least common denominator 
aspect as you're trying to expose that universal API? There surely is, and I think we are too early stage to pinpoint them. We, but what I can answer to that is that at first, HTML sucked big time, and that's why Flash survived for many years to cover up the what was missing in HTML, and then the standard, the standard evolved to kind of embed that missing part, and that was HTML file, and we all loved it. And I think the same will happen here, meaning that I'm pretty sure that um, these solid standards, as they are today, lack many things that we will discover once the whole industry will start to make use of them. And then I'm pretty sure we will have workarounds running in parallel for some time until they get mer back, merged back into the, the web stack. So, that's so it's, a, it's a big picture, a long-term view that yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I So then I, I couldn't pinpoint um, uh, what can I say, a, a, a default at the moment, because so far for the use cases we covered, the stack works. There probably are plenty drawbacks in it or things that will be missing or inefficient, and we will have to improve the standards to make them uh, work with that reality of different use cases. All right. Anyone with a final question for Alex? All right, thank you very much. Thank you. I misspoke earlier about this being the last session here. There is <laughs> not a session right now. So right now, you can go and find one of three others or join Mark's government session in progress, workshop in progress. But mm -hmm. then after the break, it'll be back here uh, for another few sessions. So. Uh, on similar topics, yeah. Thank you. <laughs>